Hello there. I'm continuing uh, my series in analyzing and uh, demonstrating the games I've played on the order board tournaments this summer. So now we are in the round uh, six and uh, yeah, I'm facing a younger opponent. Uh, she's a girl from Belgium. I think she was 13 or 14 or something. Uh, she's not a beginner by any means, but uh, she's a lower, a lower rated uh, player. And although it can look like an easy victory uh, for me, I think this game is very instructive because it shows you uh, what do you do uh, when your opponent plays uh, unsound moves and evasive stamping. So uh, concretely in this game, just as inter an introduction, uh, my opponent at uh, one point moment uh, played h3 and uh, a3. So these are the moves which are not recommended, which are wasting tempo. But uh, what to do when your opponent plays moves like um, h3 and a3? So uh, how, how to how to exploit it? This is uh, this is the question. So I will show you the game, and uh, I hope that we will um, answer this question in this video. Okay. So my opponent uh, opened the game with uh, e4. I responded. Uh, well, I I just played uh, e5 as usually I do. Uh, knight f3, and I went for the Russian defense or Petrov uh, with uh, knight f6. Uh, she played uh, d3. You can see immediately this is uh, the most passive passive response so much much better is to do something something more active uh, like developing knight developing bishop uh, or okay this this one is hanging so maybe developing uh, the knight is in order or just to take this pawn you know, and so on this is the most passive passive response okay i played the uh, knight to c6 uh, knight to c3 so we are just opening the game and now i i have to continue my development i was thinking about this bishop uh, yeah, c5 is the most active square here, but then I, I, I can get into this pin, so I just went for the normal development, uh, bishop e7. Okay, and now she played h3, so this is the first uh, the first error, I mean, okay, she's covering this square, but this square is not in my plan. So if you look at this position, I mean, my bishop is not even developed, so I'm not uh, hitting this square, and uh, I mean, if I play knight to g4, I don't have any continuation, so this is a, a one a one uh, tempo tempo wasting move h3. Okay, I castled, and uh, she played bishop to e2. So she, she just wants to develop and to castle, and you can see the passivity in in her play all the time. Okay, uh, now it's my turn to develop, so to play the move. So d6, uh, opening the bishop, and uh, now she castled. I played bishop to e6. So you can see that uh, I got all my pieces developed, and uh, she still has one undeveloped piece. So it's uh, already already I have the advantage, or, or at least I, I have equalized because she wasted the uh, tempo by playing this this move. So now she develops uh, the bishop as well. The position is rather symmetric, but um, if you can see now, yeah, the, the position is symmetric. She has this uh, h3 move, which does nothing, and it's my move. So it's uh, almost like I am I am white here, because I, I have the move and this move didn't do anything. So um, okay, what to do when there is nothing to do? Continue development, uh, play in the center, uh, improve your pieces. So I played um, queen to d7. Now my rooks are connected, and next I will just centralize my rooks. And now she plays a3, so giving me a uh, second tempo. And now I am. Now I have an, an advantage because uh, when and she gave me one tempo, it was equal because white has one tempo when, when the game starts. So she gave me one tempo, uh, we were equal, and now she's giving me another tempo, and uh, now I'm better. So what to do? How to take advantage of this tempi? Uh, the idea is uh, because I have two tempi more, I can bring more pieces to the center than she can, and I can bring the pieces in the center faster. And then once the center opens, it will open by either me playing d5 or she playing d4, then I will be the one who will have uh, the, the pieces in, in better squares and uh, ready ready to strike. So this is what I did. So first I brought one rook to the center, she's now doing the same, developing, trying to connect to the rooks, and uh, okay, now I was a little bit calculating what, what if, what if, and I decided that it would be nice to have the rook aligned with the queen, because then this gives me, uh, then this d5 move can, uh, well, it, it can, it can uh, make some tactics, because uh, after this pawn is removed, for example, uh, this pawn is uh, paralyzed. So if this uh, pawn is removed, and this is only rook, 
here, then this pawn will be paralyzed. So this is why I played uh, queen to c8 here. So just aligning my, my rook with uh, my opponent's queen. And now what uh, she she uh, had to do was uh, also to, to, to try to centralize, to start to improve uh, her pieces. But she became kind of impatient and uh, she decided to open the position uh, right now. And uh, you'll see this favors me because I have better development. I have one rook in the center and uh, this is what uh, makes all the difference. So uh, she did play uh, d4, okay. I spent a little bit of time, I didn't just play immediately, I calculated several sequences moves. Of course, the immediate threat is to play d5, forking the, my, my pieces, so it's not like I have much choice here. So e takes d4, knight takes d4, and now we, we did exchange some pieces, but I, I did see this uh, this war, and I, I didn't just take the pieces, I, I calculated that after all the exchanges I, I, will, I will be better. Okay, and now... Uh, after all the exchanges, I played c5. So now I'm taking more space and I'm taking uh, more control uh, in the in the center. This does leave, leave my backward pawn. I was aware of this, but I was also aware that uh, well, th this pawn can be uh, easily pushed because he has three pieces uh, covering uh, this d5 square, and I have three pieces defending d5 d5 square. And now you see how important this rook is. So just because of this one tempo, I, I have my rook on d8. And immediately I'm not afraid of backward pawn, I can push it if I want, and I, I, I can play active moves. This is important. So uh, she retreated uh, the bishop, and now I play the d5. Like I said, I had my, my rook here, I have three pieces defending it, and I can just go on and keep the initiative. E takes d5, knight take. I took the pawn, knight takes d5, uh, she took back, and I took the, the pawn. And now you can see... Again, the difference, first of all, she has some issues because uh, there are discovered attacks. My bishop is in the center of the board. This bishop is also very active. My rook is in the center. Soon the other rook will be in the center. My queen is active. So uh, everything looks fine for me. And I didn't do anything special. I just centralized my pieces. So I centralized my pieces and when the position opened, I exchanged lots of stuff and ended up with uh, having a much better position. So now she wanted to, to escape this uh, this uh, pin, and she played uh, queen to c3. Yeah, I, I had several options here, but I just wanted to, wanted to make sure, and uh, I played b6 here because I didn't want my my queen uh, to have the sole purpose of defending c5. So I wanted my queen to be free to roam, and uh, yeah, the computer thinks it's a blunder actually because there are some much better moves. Like queen to c6 immediately uh, hitting uh, g2 was much stronger move, but okay, just I just keep it slow. So b6, and uh, now she realized that this queen doesn't do anything here, and she played uh, queen to e1. And well, you, you can you can just compare the activity of my pieces and the uh, and activity of her pieces, and you will see immediately who is better. I think computer here gives like some minus two or something. That on, already I'm I'm much better. So now, uh, again, what to do when there is nothing to be done? Uh, think about uh, improving your pieces. So this bishop is just staring at this pawn. It will be much stronger on this diagonal, obviously. So I played bishop to f6. Attacking move, she has to do something. She played c3 to stop the to stop the, the threat. And now I'm centralizing another rook with a rook to e8. And now you can see that, again, I'm aligning my rook with, uh, with her queen. And yeah, I have everything centralized. My both bishops are very active. My queen is very active. It has several good squares to go. So you can see that my, my activity is, is much better. And again, I didn't do anything special. She gave me two tempi and I used these two tempi to centralize my pieces and to, to get a better control in the center. And this is all. And then, but the position kind of played itself. Of course, you still have to calculate, you have to be careful, you have to think about your opponent moves, plans, threats, checks, captures, and so on. But it's easy to play and the opportunities just just arrive by themselves so now it's her turn and uh, well, she also wants to, to activate her pieces so she played the uh, rook to d1 and uh, now i have this uh, star move which i could have played before but i didn't i first wanted to make sure that everything is protected that uh, all my pieces are activated so i'm just following this uh, uh, rule uh, morphe rule you can say activate all your pieces put your all all your pieces in the attack and uh, then, then try to do some, some plans. So I didn't want to play queen to c6 before 
I got everything covered. Everything I wanted to, this guy to to be protected because it's under attack. I wanted to have my my rooks ready ready to go, and now it's just time to strike. So uh, queen c6 uh, is a strike, and now uh, there is nothing much much to do here. I'm hitting uh, g uh, g2. She cannot play f3 because then uh, her bishop uh, will be gone, and uh, there is uh, no good way to to defend. Uh, against losing at least a pawn and uh, also getting in much uh, worse position. Yeah, so she took some time thinking about this and she decided to play bishop to f3. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe the better move uh, was uh, just to play something like g3, but uh, well, then again it uh, it doesn't look uh, it doesn't look very very well here. I can play uh, bishop g2 and then uh, grab this pawn. So I, I thought maybe she would play g3, but okay, uh, she did play uh, bishop to f3, and uh, now it's relatively easy uh, to to finish this game. But uh, still, I mean, you 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 never should should relax. Uh, yeah, I am a pawn up. I will be a pawn up, and uh, I will have a better position. But uh, I still have to play very very carefully. And uh, as you will see, I did kind of blunder in the end, but uh, at that point it, it didn't matter. And uh, it was lucky for, lucky for me. So I took the bishop, uh, she took the pawn, and uh, I took uh, the pawn with uh, the queen. Now she decided to exchange uh, rooks. I'm, I'm not sure why. I guess she wanted uh, to, to get her queen activated, so we exchanged rooks. And then she played the uh, bishop to c1. And I just uh, pick up the other the other pawn. I mean, there, there was no good way to defend the pawn because I was covering both both of these squares. Okay, now she centralizes the queen, and uh, I just uh, con I, I just uh, just consolidate. I I want to have everything covered. I want to have my pieces coordinated. I have I want to cover any any penetration squares, any penetration ideas. Okay, she uh, plays rook e one, activating the rook, and now I play h five, giving the hole uh, first of all for my king, uh, just to avoid any back rank uh, threats in the future, but also. I want to exchange queens, so I want to go to the pure middle game. You can see that I have, I'm two pawns up and I have one pass pawn, so I want to go to the pure uh, end game. So my idea was if I if I get this check, uh, she will be forced to to exchange queens. But uh, yeah, I, I was thinking here also, if 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 this would happen, I have to make sure that I can defend this pawn because it's uh, it's very easy to 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 get to this pawn, but. Uh, I can just uh, move my bishop and uh, protect the pawn very easily. So this was, this was kind of my plan. And uh, she made, made this easy because she played uh, king to g2. I guess uh, she thought that uh, now if I if I make this um, this check, uh, then yeah, she can she can just take the pawn. So I guess this was her idea. But uh, I suppose that sh uh, she missed that I have this uh, queen to d5 move now, pinning the queen and forcing the queen exchange. I, I think she, she just missed this. So uh, we exchanged queens, and uh, now she she gave a check. I mean, it's it's now very very straightforward. I'm uh, activating. Uh, she's putting back her rook. Okay, and now I'm just pushing my pawns. G5. Uh, she's trying to do something, but there is nothing much to be done. I'm uh, putting my my king up. Uh, king H3. She's trying to to stop my my passed pawn with the king. This is a good idea. Uh, bishop to E7. Yeah, I, I want to to activate my my bishop, I guess. Uh, rook to g1. I mean, she has some good good intentions. She's uh, she's trying to to make pressures and, and so on. But okay, it doesn't work. So uh, g4 check. Uh, king to g3. F5 just pushing. Uh, rook to h1. King to d3. Now I'm pinning the uh, the bishop and uh, threatening just to win the bishop uh, altogether. So she played the uh, king to g2, and now I see my chance to exchange bishops. So we exchange bishops, and uh, she's still trying to activate her uh, rook. Maybe maybe threat to take this pawn, or maybe just to threat to, to give some checks from behind. But I'm just pushing my pa my pass pawn. H4. She goes uh, over there to e8 h3 check, g1, and now I give check here, uh, king h2, and I'm just attacking my king so she cannot now 
she cannot check me uh, anymore and uh, it, it's very easy now to push my pawns. Rook to e3, rook to d2, now I'm threatening to take this pawn and also this pawn, uh, king to g1. And this is the moment I made uh, a little blunder, which didn't, doesn't matter, but still uh, this is the moment in which I completely uh, relaxed. So I, so, so I thought, okay, I'm just two moves up to promotion. My rook is super active, I can do whatever I want with my rook. So at this moment I, I relaxed and I just saw this uh, g3 and, I, I, and uh, if she takes I will take her rook, so she, she's not allowed to take and I will just give her uh, very soon promotion. But uh, And then I play g3 and I didn't see that, uh, well she's not obliged to take with the pawn, she can take with the rook. And the, when, once uh, she took with the rook I lose both of my pawns. So suddenly I made the blunder in which I lose both of my my past pawns. So uh, yeah, she, she took the pawn, but it's, it's too late because I, I have active rook, I can just go on the other side. But still a lesson not, not to get relaxed. a4, rook to b1, she went here and then I, I just went after this pawn. She took the pawn, check, she went here and then she resigned the game. Because she, I mean, she, she cannot stop I mean, I have one pass pawn, and she cannot stop losing one, one, one more pawn. I, I don't see how. What can she, she do? I can go here, here, threatening checkmate, for example. If, if she does, does here, I'm here, I'm threatening checkmate. So yeah, she has to do something like this, and then one, one of these pawns is falling anyway. So this is the moment in which she, uh, she just resigned the game after, after this move. Okay, um, this is it, this is the game. I think it's very instructive. There are two instructive points. So first of all, what to do when your opponent is just giving away the tempi. Uh, just use, use this tempi to, uh, to, come, to come to the center and just to centralize your pieces and to get a better control of the center. And then once the position opens, you will have more active pieces and you will be able to find some good combinations and some good attacking ideas. And the second idea is don't relax, don't ever ever relax. So this position, I mean, simple, completely winning position, and then I just <laughs> make a move in which I lose these two pawns. So don't, don't relax. Uh, un until the game is over, you should be 100% concentrating in finding the best moves in any given position. It doesn't matter if you're queen up, you have to find the best move, and you have to do the maximal effort to find the best move in a given position. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I will uh, continue with this series, you will see the, uh, the next game, the game in the round 7, is uh, in fact very similar to this. I also had a weaker opponent who was giving away Tempi and uh, exploited this, so uh, watch the next video as well, it's uh, another example of this uh, principle. Thank you very much for watching, uh, if you like the video please click the like button, leave the comment below, uh, support the channel if you think it's worth supporting, subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed, and uh, I will see you very soon with more chess. Cheers!